Well, good morning. How's everything for you today? I'm driving around. I just dropped Willem off at work, and now I'm going to do a bunch of errands today. Nice to see you. I'm glad I brought you along, because I get a little lonely without you. You know that? So, let me see if I can rehearse to you my errands that I'm going to run today. Um, I've got to go return this cello. Abraham rented a cello for a month. They had a play a, play a different instrument thing happening at school for a week. And so he rented a cello and he practiced the cello for it. And um, let's see, that's one thing I'm going to do. Another thing I need to get flour. <sighs> so I'm going to go to the grocery store, I guess. I'm, I'm going to try and take Ab Daniel out to lunch if I can get a hold of him. If he's working today, I'll phone his office and see my little Daniel. And um, there's more things. I think I remembered a bunch of things. The car, the oil needs to be changed in this car. He's a few kilometers over. It says to do it in February or do it at 160,000 kilometers. No, 120,000 kilometers. But he's at 123,000. February, you're supposed to do it every three months. December, January, February. How can that be? He must have just gotten it done. I don't know. But he didn't. At least this is an old number on there. What do you want to do today? I didn't ask you. It's a dreary cold, or not cold, it's a dreary day. It's 9 degrees Celsius. It's, it's, we're having a major rainfall. You should have seen the tempo. My word, I put this, <clears throat> this um, little makeshift garage up. It's poles and a cloth. And I tied the cloth to the corners, but I didn't put it through these rods at the bottom. Well, there was more than what you would fit in a bathtub in one of these puddles in there. There was another one that had about half a bathtub full. On the other side, Willem had already emptied it when I came. A bathtub full. It was huge. I couldn't even push it up. There was no way to push up on it. It was, it was pulling down. It was going to wreck everything. These windshield wipers don't work so well. I was going to try that um, alcohol. If you wipe alcohol on your windshield wipers, it's supposed to make them work without squeaking. Maybe I should try that before I get a new set. So the trouble I always have when I drop off Willem is that I drop him off early and things aren't open yet. Things open at 10 or 9. It is almost nine now, actually, because I drove with him. He stayed up all night. It was some deadline, so we had to do all this stuff. So we came home and he went to bed for about an hour and a half, or maybe two hours. And then he got up and he went. He napped for about an hour in the chair, and then I. I drove him into work because he's got this bunch of stuff he's going to do after work, too. And there's no way he'll stay awake for all that. Okay, so here we are. Somewhere. This is one of those most dangerous intersections, you know, where people run the red light or the orange light. told me when he was leaving, he says, I put your teeth in some water. And this morning when I said I was going to drive him, he says, okay, we'll come right away. You've got to go right away. Like I asked him, I said at five, I said, I'll drive you to work, okay? And he says, no, no, I'll be fine. And of course he felt fine because he was wide awake. He'd been up all night. 
And so, okay, I went back to bed. And at 7 or something, 6.30, I was supposed to pick up Abraham after pit band today. So then what happens, you know? Well, and then I thought he had a doctor's appointment this morning, but he says that it was one week after when he was supposed to have it last time, which was... Um, Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure it was Wednesday because he was going to see Dr. Crawford and the only time Dr. Crawford is there is on Wednesdays. And today's Wednesday. So I think we're now in the process of standing up the doctor. I should phone the doctor's office, right? That would be the right thing to do. But first I would have to open my computer and find the phone number if I have it in my computer. Maybe I have to find somewhere where there's the internet. You know, I think that would be a nice thing to do is park where I can find the internet. Here's a Walmart here. Now, I could get groceries there if they're open, but I mean, that's just the end of everything if you buy your groceries at Walmart. Then all the grocery stores will fold one at a time. There won't be any grocery stores. Then there's some good cheap grocery stores. There's San Laurent Fruit and Vegetable. And there's Food Basics. But I'm not near Food Basics. I'm at Bank and Hunt Club, I guess. South Keys Mall. I could go in here. But what if I keep going down this road? On the, get out of town a little bit. I also want to get the oil changed, and to get it changed at Canadian Tire, it's gone up. It's now $30, $30 a tire, or $35. It used to be $19. I think that's changed. Willem says it costs $40 to go to one of those quick oil change places. Makes me just want to go and buy a wrench and do it myself. But not that badly. So where do they have the internet? Where can you just sit in an internet cafe? Like fast food places? Does Tim Hortons have it? Or Harvey's? Wouldn't it say if they have it? There's a good restaurant here at this intersection. Let me show you what it is. Okay, we're at Bank and Hunt Club. And right over there... It's called the Golden Center Restaurant. Anyway, it's that place where it's yellow, right there. It's at this intersection of of Hunt Club and Bank. Rue Bank Street. Rue is French for street. Anyway, that's a good all-you-can-eat restaurant for lunches. Five or six dollars, something like that. That's where we have met with the kids before. All right, well, I don't want you to have to look at the traffic because that's rather boring, don't you think? I mean, somebody was saying that that's why you like videos with this camera because you like to look at me and not to look at the bubble locked to be on my head. Well, I don't have my head camera with me today because I was in such a hurry. One place you can always go and be on the internet is a, the lounge of a, um, oh no, there's a metro, 24 hour metro, that's a grocery store.
goes through. Um, if you Cam Fung Buffet and Bar. Sometimes those buffets have a good lunch thing. Oh, that's a big cemetery. See, it's over there. So we're supposed to get about two inches of rain, and it's already rained a ton. And then it's supposed to snow change to snow this evening. It's plus nine, so when it goes down to zero Fahrenheit or Celsius, it'll snow. <sighs> Sorry. Hmm. I guess I didn't get a lot of sleep myself. Let's be happy. Hi! It's good to see you! Put that smile on your face. In spite of the big cloud. Now, I think there used to be a store around here somewhere. Kmart or something. But didn't the Kmarts all get bought out? Look, there's a Tim Hortons. I wonder if they have internet. I would like to go to an internet cafe where I could... There's a giant tiger. Giant tigers, good prices on food, that's okay. We'll go there. And it's a big giant tiger too. Just get in front of this great big truck. Now what time does Giant Tiger open? It's 9.01. Would you like to hear the news? It's an Breaking news. Some of it about the CBC and some about what's called this country's inferiority complex. Here's Hannah Thibodeau in Ottawa. In one cable, it's in uh, advance of President Barack Obama's visit to Ottawa here. Um, and in that cable, it says that Prime Minister Stephen Harper stood to gain politically from public and policy association with the U.S. president. So that's one a little bit about the inferiority complex. Uh, when it comes to uh, stereotyping, uh, there's some blaming of the CBC in this one. There's what Americans say face uh, popular stereotyping, and they say in these cables it's perpetuated by CBC programming, shows such as The Border. Now, in this, they complain that The Border feature, features negative stereotyping uh, in such episodes featuring CIA renditions, uh, schemes to steal Canadian water, and the Guantanamo Syria Express. So that's one example. But also in the 2008 memo, they also refer to the CBC comedy uh, Little Mosque on the Prairie for its stereotyping of U.S. border guards. That's Hannah Thibodeau in Ottawa. A prominent conservative party strategist here says okay. he flattered his name as being tossed around as a possible replacement for Newfoundland and Labrador's... That's it. I can only take so much bad news in one day. So we have our keys. And we have our money. And we have you. What else do we need? Let's sneak into the store. Okay, bye.